When you think of the aeroplane, do you think of a beast of burden, an ox cart or a camel train carrying man and his goods on short hauls across mountains and deserts? No. You think of these fast flying giants, of miracles like breakfast in one city, lunch in another thousands of miles off. Hundreds of people carried quickly and simply over long distances. Perhaps carrying tourists from the cold north to the warm south. perhaps carrying them to Haiti, where Port-au-Prince may be alive in the excitement of Mardi Gras. During Carnival, Port-au-Prince glitters. But beyond the Haiti of the tourist, beyond the capital city, are mountains like these, ranging up to nearly 10,000 feet in height, covering four-fifths of the country. Roads are few, hard and costly to build. The transport of people and goods is difficult, producing much economic hardship. Even under these formidable conditions, people and goods do move, but at a slower rate. Some of the old-fashioned means of transportation remain, and some new ones have been added, such as this bus loading for a trip from Port-au-Prince to Jacmel. Its passengers prepare for a long journey, and yet Jacmel is not very far away. As the crow flies, the distance is only 40 kilometers, but this bus doesn't have wings. Its path is a tortuous one, over poor roads, along dry riverbeds through the mountains. Ninety kilometers to go, and a whole day to get there. But there is an easier way to go from Port-au-Prince to Jacmel. An ox cart isn't luxurious, a mule isn't fast, nor does an aeroplane need to be when it serves as a beast of burden. All it has to have is the ability to leap over the hurdles of hostile terrain, bypassing the poor roads on the ground, making use of the roads in the sky. This dry riverbed can be navigated with difficulty by buses and trucks. When the river fills, all ground traffic between Port-au-Prince and Jacmel must come to a halt, and the economy of the country suffers. So that a nation's economy may come to depend on its fleets of winged ox carts and winged mules. And therefore, more and more, governments are working to expand their civil aviation services. Jacmel, a whole day's trip cut to 15 minutes. Within Haiti, mass air transportation is just beginning. It must be made cheaper, more available. Few passengers realize the preparations behind their flights, the supporting facilities on the ground which have to be established. For safety and economy in the air, depend on men and equipment on the ground, on radio and navigation aids, on weather forecasts, on trained technicians, and above all, on careful planning. To develop this necessary ground structure, 
Eight, he receives technical aid from the International Civil Aviation Organization as part of the technical assistance program of the United Nations and the specialized agencies. Here in Jacques Mill, the Haitian Chief of Aviation Services confers with an ICAO technical assistance expert. In its role as advisor, ICAO uses the accumulated knowledge of a hundred member nations. Nations like Brazil, a great subcontinent that has learned to use the aeroplane to carry man and his goods over its immense distances. These highways in the sky are the veins and arteries of Brazil. Here at Rio de Janeiro, at Sao Paulo, and at other big city airports, the ground support system is highly developed. Conforming to the international standards and procedures of ICAO, it is designed to ensure that air transportation is safe and efficient. In the ground support system, many different disciplines are brought together. Communications networks, weather forecasting, and traffic control all contribute to keep aircraft moving surely and economically. They go by air, not only because it is faster, but because it is more convenient. And often, in the vast hinterland, there is just no other way to go. the savanna and the jungle, off to large cities and small villages, off from Rio to Sao Paulo 30 times a day. Some of these planes are headed for the forest villages of the Mato Grosso such as this one, which came from Belém on the Amazon, carrying a cargo of flour. No roads lead here to this rich cattle ranching country. No roads to carry freight, except the roads in the sky. After the cargo is unloaded, the aircraft is made ready for its next assignment, a cargo of meat from the cattle ranches, to be flown back to Belém and the cities. time is lost on the ground. The plane climbs into the air again, headed back for Belém as it soars high over the Amazon. countries, perishable food must be transported quickly. In Belém, the meat has arrived safely. The aeroplane is serviced, and soon it will wend its way back to the Mato Grosso with tropical fruits and manufactured goods, an aerial shuttle contributing to the nation's economy. But in many parts of the country, there are villages too small to support commercial aviation. And this is another facet of Brazil's use of the aeroplane. For these villages need transportation, need medical help, connections with civilization. Throughout Brazil, these connections are supplied by the Correio Aéreo Nacional, run by the Brazilian Air Force. Supplied to places like Daiwaru, the place of the Black Panther in central Brazil.
few places in the world are more isolated, few people more primitive than these Indians. They were born into the Stone Age, yet suddenly change is coming to Daiawaru, and it comes on the wings of the Correo Aéreo Nacional. Now medical help is available when necessary. The plagues which beset the Indians can be stopped. Now teachers can come. Now there is new support for the few devoted men like Claudio Vilas Boas, who have spent their lives in the service of the Indians. Thus, slowly, the 20th century comes to Daiawaru. And yet, not too far away, it comes not slowly, but with a great leap to central Brazil. Or perhaps it is the 21st century that comes. For this is Brasilia, the nation's capital a 70-year-old dream brought to fruition in only five years. A city of the air age whose fantastic architecture is a link to the future, not to the past. When construction began on this empty plateau deep in the interior, there were no roads reaching in. Everything had to come by air, city planners and architects contractors and workmen, machinery and materials. Gradually, roads were cut through from the coast, through the savanna and the jungle, but the lawmakers and the civil servants still travel by air between Rio and Brasilia. This is Brazil's hope for the future. By locating its spectacular capital here, it hopes to turn attention from the thickly populated coastal cities to the vast interior, teeming with potential resources and wealth, lacking only the population necessary to make the hope come true. And if the interior is to be opened, the aeroplane must again be a major factor. And so, the city of Brasilia, born from the air, symbolizes the value of the aeroplane in conquering barriers of terrain and of distance. From the aeroplane, from the accumulated knowledge and skills developed by men all over the world, other countries too can and do benefit. This accumulated knowledge, now freely available through the International Civil Aviation Organization, is helping man achieve greater freedom in his movements around the Earth.